Hey guys, um, I'm going to tell you how to get your most out of your putting today. So we're going to talk about the different variables. We're going to talk about how you read stem charts. We're going to hit a few putts on a practice screen, and then I'm going to play my pro round so you can see while I'm playing what I'm thinking about, and I'll walk you through everything. I'll walk you through the shots too, if there's wind, how I'm thinking about that, how I'm thinking about green firmness, just so you can get an idea of how to play a course when you go out. So starting off, I think, number one, if you want to get better at your putting, you need to practice it. Sounds pretty simple. But where do you practice putting on GS Pro? And I'll tell you, the best place that I've found is somewhere that's completely flat. flat. So there are a couple of places. Um, I know a lot of people like to use the night range. I prefer the GS Pro practice facility. So how you do this, you can go into your practice menu. And then on course practice. And if you search GS Pro, it'll pop up here. So I'm going to click Play Course. And then since I'm going to be playing on 12 stems, I'm going to make sure that that's what I turn on. So I'm going to go play the GS Pro practice facility. Now, this practice facility is awesome. I use it a lot to warm up. So if you actually go and do a local match at the GS Pro practice facility, you can set it up to the stem and firmness that you're going to be playing on. And then it starts you out with a 50 yard hole and it goes from 50 to 15 yards, bunker shot, tight little pitches, everything. I like to go here to warm up and it'll get you um, help with your putting, it'll get you help with your chipping, just kind of get all the feels right. For now, we're gonna pick a putt. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna drop this little dude somewhere 16 feet away. You can see that this is a perfectly flat putt. There are some breaking putts out here, but I don't really wanna do that. So now, how do you take your putting from inside to outside and outside to inside? So I think a lot of people say that GS Pro does not play accurately to what they see. Part of the problem is most people don't play on greens that are as fast as we play on GS Pro ever. When I go play tournaments like the State Am, USGA qualifiers or whatever, I rarely see greens that are over 10 stamp. Sometimes I see an 11. When I go out and play a casual round, most everything is like, seven and a half to nine. There's not much more that I play on munis that is like that. So it's kind of hard for you to think about how you can take your inside game to outside, but if you kind of reverse engineer everything, you'll see what I'm saying, it'll help you be a better putter outside, I believe. So number one, you need to understand stem charts. So when looking at the stem chart that I have on the screen, you can see that there are the column on the left is your ball speed and miles per hour. And then on the right side of that is assuming a perfectly flat putt, a, you know, no inches up, no inches down. Wind doesn't affect putts in GS Pro, so don't even calculate that in. So if you were to hit a six mile per hour putt on 12 stamps, it should roll 22.2 feet. Now, how did they get 22.2 feet? Well, there was testing done. And they went out and they hit putts, measured it on a GC2, so it could be updated eventually to get a little more accurate mile per hour with a quad or GC3 now that we have them. But they went out and hit those putts, certain miles per hour, and they measured them on a perfectly flat green. How far did they roll? So everything that you think about in GS Pro should be how hard should I hit this putt if it was completely flat? And I'll tell you how you can make those calculations. So number one, let's start out by saying that on the left side, you're going to learn to putt in miles per hour, which is extremely weird, but it's very helpful. Um, and how we can learn how to do that is by thinking about how we putt outside. So for me, I think, okay, if I had a 10-footer outside, how hard would I hit a 10-footer? So again, I play on 9 cent greens outside or whatever. And if you aren't very good at this, this is why I have the ruler. You could get a ruler and you could literally measure and say, okay, a four mile per hour putt for me is a six inch backstroke. So for me, if I'm thinking about hitting a 10 footer outside, this is my 10 foot putting stroke. Okay. So you can see that I was, I, I hit that and it rolled out not quite to the 16 foot mark because it was about a 10 foot putt which makes, makes about sense. Um, so I hit that four miles per hour. So a four mile per hour putt on 10 stimp 
is nine feet. So outside, I probably would have been a little short on that putt. However, that's how hard I hit a four mile per hour putt. Let's say it rolled 11 feet in the game, which is about what it did. So now you know, okay, my 10 foot outside putt goes four miles per hour. Why is that important? Well, because if you look at the stem charts, we have stem charts for every single stem from eight to 12. And if you know how hard you hit a, or how what your putting stroke is to hit a four mile per hour putt, all you have to do is just say, okay, what is that roll on certain stems? So let's say that your 10 foot putting stroke outside is six. So what is six roll on a 12? Well, six miles per hour on a 12 actually rolls 22 feet. A lot of people don't realize how hard they hit a ball inside. They think that they are barely tapping it when in reality they're smoking the ball. Partially due to people playing on greens outside that are way slower than what we play inside. Even if you play on eights, that putt's not going 22 feet. It's going 18 feet, which is still way past the hole. So you need to learn how to putt in miles per hour. For example, this putt right here is 16 feet long. So if, if you look at the chart, 16 feet is exactly 5 miles an hour. Well, for me, I don't use a ruler when I play because I mean, you can if you want to get used to it, but it's not advisable, especially if you're playing tournament rounds. However, I know that my my 5 mile per hour putting stroke is generally toe to toe. So let's see how accurate I am with that assessment of it being toe to toe. 4.4, didn't quite hit it. It was probably a little lot, but still, if I hit that putt again, go toe to toe. There you go, five miles per hour. So, it's extremely weird to learn how to putt in miles per hour, but it's very, very helpful. The other thing you need to know about GS Pro putting is because of restrictions on launch monitors, it's very, very, very hard to hit a putt under two and a half miles per hour. I could barely tap this, and it would still probably be about three miles per hour. I might be able to get a good one. Let's see here. There you go, 2.2. That's about as soft as I can hit a putt. The reason that you see five-foot gimme circles is because most launch monitors, you have a really hard time hitting putts that are under three miles an hour. I mean, you have to just barely, barely touch it. A lot of people don't like doing that. It's not quite what it is outside. You know, I think part of what you're seeing is every single launch monitor has trouble reading putts that slow. It's not just Foresight. It's not just Unicor. Mevo's definitely going to struggle with it. So just keep that in mind that the reason we play on five-foot givenies is because launch monitors are very dependent on trying to read the putts as best they can, but they still can't get it quite 100% right on anything Really, the flow speed probably less than four miles an hour. It's just hard. The other thing you need to know is that up until you hit, I think it's six miles an hour, there are bumpers for the HLA. So if you don't play with HLA, you'll never know this, but HLA is very important. So HLA means horizontal launch angle. So when you're looking at your screen, you see I have HLA on my screen up there. The... 0.0, .0 means the last putt that I hit was dead square. If you see positive numbers, it means you pushed it out to the right. And if you see negative numbers, it means you pulled it out to the left. Why is this important? So if you're trying to read a breaking putt and you say, okay, I think it needs to go right there. That means that where your stick is, you are aimed. If you were to hit a 0.0, .0 putt and there was no break in the putt, it would go exactly to that stick. However, most people tend to have a pull or a push, and so it will go either side of that. Now, GS Pro has a function in there. Again, due to launch monitor constraints, it's hard for launch monitors to get the launch angle right with just a small window and a slow putt. It tends to overread left and right. So they built in bumpers. So, for example, this 0.0, .0 putt that I hit earlier was actually 0.3 degrees right. I'm going to purposely push one here. So on my launch monitor, that says 1.2 degrees right, but up there it says it only went 0.4 degrees right. So that's GS Pro's um, built-in bumpers helping 
make sure that that ball rolls a little straighter due to the constraints of most launch monitors. Unicore overheads tend to have a whole lot better view of the ball and it can get better launch angles, but anything that's gonna set beside the ball and probably Mevo that sets behind it is gonna have a really hard time picking up exactly which way that ball is starting. Now, the final thing is that when you see putts that are going uphill and downhill, you need to think in your head that for every inch uphill or inch downhill, you need to either add a foot or take a foot off the putt. So for example, if we have a putt that's 16 feet, but it's two inches uphill, I need to hit that 18 feet. So how do I know how to hit that 18 feet? Well, I'm gonna go over to the stem chart and I'm gonna look on the right side and say, okay, if I need to hit a putt 18 feet, I'm probably gonna be looking to hit this more around 5.5 miles per hour than I am five miles per hour. You wanna make sure you get the ball to the hole, can't go in if it doesn't get there. So let's think that it's gonna be 5.5 when we do that. Now, reverse of that, if it's 16 feet down to, it's gonna be a 14 foot putt. So if we hit it 5.5, it's gonna go way past. You need to be thinking more along the lines of four and a half and that ball is gonna go in. So I hope that helps. If you're gonna stick around, I'm gonna play my pro round. You can see me making the calculations. I'll walk you through everything. We can look at this. We can look at how to read break um, if you want. All right, I'm pretty pumped about this course. So this is pro round one. Um, this is Sleepy Hollow Country Club in New York. So this was actually the host of the 2023 U.S. Mid Amateur. Shout out to Keith Early. He actually played in it this year. I unfortunately missed by a couple shots and being able to make it, but that's okay because I had a little girl the, about two weeks after it, so I would have been cutting it close trying to travel there. <laughs> would not have been good with my wife. Um, so this is one of America's top 100 courses. This is a phenomenal course. It's going to be tough around the greens. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to dim my lights here so I can see a little bit better. And we will start with it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sound off on the game just because I don't want to have to listen to birds in my ear the whole time. Okay. So first off, you can see that this is 421 and it's 19 yards downhill. So meaning the ball is going to fly 20 yards further than it normally would off this. So real life, this is a pretty tight tee shot because you can see that there's going to be that in or out of bounds over there on the right. So I'm actually going to take it up the left-hand side. I tend to play a little bit of a draw. There's not much down there, except i got to carry two big trees, try to work it back in the fairway. Worst case scenario, I'm in the right rough and kind of a little short-sided to a pin, but we'll see. There's not much wind this round, so um, I'll try to help you with thoughts on the wind for when you play breezier conditions, but for now... I'm going to try and hit this in the fairway with my draw. Not the longest player, so those trees are probably going to come into play for me. Yeah, dead straight. Oh, I flew the tree. Okay. All right. So... All right, so this hole, I got 118. The rough takes off. Um, I believe this is firm, firm. Uh, no, normal, normal with 12 greens. So with normal, normal and 12, I'm going to be thinking probably want to hit this right at the number, which the number in this case actually with it being seven feet down, I'm going to play it two yards short, so 116 a little bit of wind so it's going to knock it down a little bit but i think anything between 110 and 116 here is going to be pretty good out of the rough it's going to take the spin off of it so i'm okay with that um i normally if i was playing this out of the fairway to that pin if i'm playing a wedge like i am now i'd fly it to the hole if i was playing an iron i'd probably land it a little short out of the <clears throat> rough to this pin I always try to play the number because it seems like it always works out where wherever the ball lands, it rolls out 
to where I need it to. You need to play around with your launch, your um, spin, and see how that does for you. But for me, I can generally just play the numbers. So I'm going to try and play like a 116 shot. We'll see how well it goes for me. All right, I pulled the crap out of it. But you can see that the yardage was right about right. And now we've got a 20-foot putt. So this is 23 feet, 8 inches. Let's round that up to 24. So it's 24 inches <clears throat> up 5. So this is a 29-foot putt, essentially. So how hard am I going to hit this? Well, I'm going to hit this. If I go over to my chart, I'm hoping to hit this somewhere in the 7 to 7.5 seven range. That's going to be perfect for me. Now, people read beads differently. I tend to take a few guesses at it and kind of look. I like to see the initial read. So when people watch my streams and you see me clicking a lot, it's just because I like to watch how fast those beads start off that line. So for this, I'm going to play this probably about right there. I think I like it one more. <clears throat> now, another key thing to know is the faster the green, the more break you're going to have. The more uphill, the less break you have, and the more downhill, the more break you're going to have. So with this being uphill, five inches is going to break a little less. I'm thinking one stick more because... I don't know. I tend to pull putts, so let's see. So seven to seven and a half is my range. <clears throat> There's 6.9, and it's not going to break quite enough for me. It's close. Not too terrible. I pushed it two degrees right. You can see that up there. So I pushed it two degrees on monitor, it corrected to... 1.3 kind of a little bit lucky there okay this hole right here so <clears throat> i have driver out i typically always hit driver good outside bat or bat bad outside good inside so this means i need to carry it at least 280 in the air so since that's 258 up 22 that's a 280 carry to get right there so if i want to make sure i'm not in that bunker i'm going to hit 280 um, if anything, I'm going to probably try and swing at it, and I might block it a little bit. So we'll see. Let's try to hit it up there as far as I possibly can. Oh, it might carry just good enough. Yeah, perfect. Oh, I actually needed like 285 on it. <clears throat> All right. I got 58 yards up four, so this is a 62-yard shot. Looking at the green, this is J and Y that I'm using, by the way. J zooms you in and back out. Y does the heat map, heat map. If it's red, it's an uphill. If it's green, it's downhill. Blue is severely downhill. <clears throat> Orange is a little uphill. So this means I've got a pretty good backstop with it. So 62 yards with it being normal greens. I tend to spin the ball quite a bit, so I'm thinking probably... 55 to 55 to 60 is going to be a good good number for me here. Oh, 62. I flew it all the way there, but I had a bunch of spin on it. So let's see. Yep, that'll work. Probably prefer not to be above the hole on any of these classic American courses, but it's what it is. So this is five foot ten, which I'm going to round to six foot, down a foot. So with it being down, it's going to break a little bit more. If you watch my streams, you know I'm terrible at this putt. That's okay. Um, okay, so right about there. That's where I'm going to play it. And I want to hit this. So if you're looking up there, you see that 65 is 3 miles an hour. I tend to like it a little bit firmer than that. So I'm going to go somewhere maybe 3.5 is my goal. If I miss this, it's going to be super embarrassing. There we go. Okay. We got one up on the board. Now, 158 yards. You can see the sweet little walkway over there on the left they're kind of famous for. So 158 up 10 feet. So that is going to be 
let's call it a 161 shot, I've got three miles an hour wind behind it. So my rule of thumb is for every mile an hour wind, it adds or takes off a yard or pushes it left a yard or pushes it right a yard. Um, with this being tucked right over a bunker, I don't want to be short here. So I am going to take more club than I probably need, which is an eight iron for me. <clears throat> I, um, I play traditionally lofted clubs and spin the ball a lot. I like to go at these tight pins. So for me, this feels <clears throat> like it would be a perfect 155 shot, which is like a 90% eight iron for me. So that's exactly what I'm going to try to do is just try and hit like a 155 shot. If I hit a little too much, I'm not going to be crying because it's going to be a little bit long and on the green. There it is, 156. I did pull it pretty hard, unfortunately, but it's going to leave us a putt. There we go, work back down to it. Keep going, ball. Keep going. Love it. All right. So I have 12 foot down one. So this is an 11 foot putt. And you can see it's really going to swing here at the beginning. So remember, this is being, with it being downhill, it's going to break a little bit more. So I'm going to find my initial line and then I'm going to add just a little bit more. So I think my initial line, looking at where it's starting, I think that this right here is probably where I want it. With it being downhill, I'm going to go right there. Um, 11 foot putt, so I'm thinking right at four miles an hour. I tend to err on the side of hit it a little too hard. Now that I look at it a little more, I'm kind of like one more stick. Yeah, we're getting out there too far right there. So I'm going to try and hit probably 4.3 miles an hour, somewhere in that range. There we go. Two in a row. All right. Again, probably just going to mash driver all the way up there. 320, not really any trouble. Fairway slopes from right to left. I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can. If it goes in the rough, I actually appreciate that because it means my wedge is not going to just absolutely spin off the front of the green. So see how hard I can hit one. I Again, not very long off the tee, so don't laugh at my 113 swing speed. <laughs> All right. So I've got 114, 115, pretty flat. Let's look at the green and see... What have we got going on? Okay, so there's a little bit of a backslope there. I don't want to hit it five yards deep into the green. Though. So I'm thinking a 110 swing. That's like a 50 degree that I'm going to kind of saw off maybe to, I don't know. It's probably going to look pretty full, but for me, the speed-wise of the club is going to be three-quarters-ish. Oh, boy. I've got the huge pulls today. That's nine yards left. I do not like that at all. With the wedge in my hand, I want to be way closer than that. All right. So this is 26 down one, so a 25-foot putt. So my line for 25 feet is probably going to be right here. And then add a little bit more for the downhill. I think that is probably a pretty good line. Yeah, I like that right there a lot. So 25 feet, how far is that? That's six and a half. So again, I like to be a little long, so I'm going to try and <clears throat> be just on the other side of six and a half, I think. Oh, I pulled it, but I didn't hit it, so I might have got lucky. Yeah, if I didn't. Bummer. You know, <clears throat> being uphill, being breaking left to right. If you don't hit it, the best thing you can do is pull it because it goes further up the hill and you're not losing all that extra break. All right, 394, 305. I like where that's aimed. Again, because, because this is GS Pro, not real life, I am 
only trying to hit this as far as I can down there and have a wedge in. <clears throat> okay, looks like I'm going to have right at 100. That's good. I like 100 yards. 107. <clears throat> okay. Again, i got a 50 degree. Let's see what the green looks like. So I've got a false front, so I really want to make sure I get it there. Degree left, so I'm going to hedge a little bit to the right there just to make sure I get it. And then make sure I don't pull this shot. I pulled the last few. So one, 107, I'm going to try and make like my 105-yard swing at it. And let's see what happens. Oh, there's 107, but again, I pulled it. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it's not great. I don't love that, to be honest, but it is what it is. Kind of the problem when you miss your line left or right on classic courses is you need to really just be below the hole, otherwise you're going to have these huge breaking putts. All right, so 12 feet. There's no uphill or downhill. So I just need to pick this line, <clears throat> and it's going to swing pretty good I think probably eesh. if I don't feel good I go back to the hole and then I inch it out so that's too little too little too little almost there and let me go one more click and one more all about feel all right, so a 12-footer here, 4.3 miles an hour. Again, try to hit 4.5. Let's see what I can do. Oh, and I didn't give it enough up there. Putting's going to be crucial this week. This is not a long course. I'm making this look... <clears throat> okay. Okay. Uh, if you're wondering why it says three under up there instead of two under, I had to quit the round and come back later. I had to go change a diaper, and I thought I was done for the night, but here I am back and able to finish. So let's try this again. Maybe a dirty diaper will help me play better. I don't know. Maybe I just needed a distraction. All right, so I'm going to try and hit it over that little corner there, see what I can do. Uh, it's not very good, but it's good. That was a terrible swing with smash factor of 1.4. I don't know if I could have hit that much worse. However, no spin means it's good. All right, so I'm really only two under. I've got 169 up six, so I've got 175 into this hole. I do not want to be long. So, and that pin is on a back ridge. So I am thinking I'm going to head to just a little right since I normally play a draw. My 7-iron is normally a 170 club. Now, 3 miles an hour wind, while not much, can't affect it. So I'm looking to hit this probably 168. Maybe maybe even less than that. Maybe Maybe 165 and let this ball run out to where it's at. If I hit a little too hard, not the end of the world. If I hit a little too short, it's not the end of the world. Main thing is I want to just keep it online here. So let's see how well I can do that. There we go, 165 online. If that wind pushes, I've got a nice tap-in eagle. Well, it's not a tap-in, but it's an eagle putt at least. Probably going to be a giant side slope. This is not going to be much fun. But, hey, eagle putt's an eagle putt, right? All right, space bar to fast forward, this thing rolling way away from the hole. Okay, so here's a good example of a putt. So I've got 17 feet. Let's call this 18 already. And then now with 10 inches uphill, do you play it 10 inches up? I think the answer is no. So the one-to-one -one ratio of one inch, one foot, 
is, I believe, for 10 stem greens. There's also a bit of a um, decay once you get above, let's say, six to eight inches. So somewhere in that range, I'm going to start playing less than the foot shown. So for this, I generally play like up to about 18 inches. I'll play about 75% of it. So for me, I'm going to play the seven inches uphill. So I think this is going to be closer to about a 24 inch putt or 24 foot putt. Sorry. So let's see here. Um, how does that look? I think it looks pretty okay. I think let's go right there. I feel like it's going to break quite a bit off that and then it's going to stop and it's going to swing back in at the end. So I like that. I'm going to say this is six and a half. 25 feet. I'm going to say six and a half in my head. I think that's probably a good good number to putt to. Oh, I would hit six and a half. It'd have been a nice eagle. Okay, 207 down 17. So we're looking at a 190 shot here. Um. Look at that big runoff. So pretty much anything that's going to land in this area over here on the mini map, if you can see that, it's pretty small, I want there. So I'm going to try and land it 10 short of that hole location right there. So I'm going to say this is a 180 to 185 shot, which is about a perfect six iron for me. I'm going to actually hit it at the hole. I tend to draw the ball a little bit, so I'm going to let the ball work towards that slope. And hopefully it's going to catch it and go on down in. I think a 185 shot is probably perfect. 180 is going to put me in a really good spot. See how well I judge it here. Oh, I didn't hit it. But if I can keep this kind of below the hole, it might work out okay. Yeah, so... Said 185 and I'm 11 yards short because I hit it 176. That tracks for me. All right, 33 up seven. This is a 40 foot putt. I'm gonna hit it. Now, not much movement there. I tend to like that. All right, 40 foot putt. I'm thinking. About eight and a half, probably. I'm thinking probably closer to nine, actually, if I'm being really honest. I, I want to make sure I get it there. So I'm thinking closer to nine. I tend to hit putts weak, so I think probably nine in my head is probably a better better option than trying to hit it to eight and a half. So nine in my head. There's 9.1. Hold your line. Oh, man. Oh, that's okay. It's a par. Don't love those, but it is what it is. Okay, so I'm three under now through eight holes. Probably prefer to be a lot better than that, but that's okay. This is going to be the guys who putt wells weak to win. I am unfortunately not one of those guys. All right. Again, downhill tee shot. I'm trying to start this up the right-hand side, let it draw back into the left. i got plenty of room left, so I know I've got got a good room to work the ball over there. Oh, and then I block it. Oh, buddy, don't do that. Be good to me, huh? Oh, man. I couldn't get any luckier than that right there. Okay. Well, now that I feel saved completely by that after hitting it right for some reason, 148. So this is kind of a tough shot for me. I I can hit a 9-iron and kind of boost it up there. I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I don't really love to hit 9-irons this hard. However, I think we've seen so far that the one place that you really don't want to be is above the hole or beside the hole. So I'm going to try and hit this 
let it start right about there, three yards right of the cup. Try to hit like a six yard draw with this and end up below the hole, putting straight up a hill. Let's see if I can be smarter than I have been previous few holes. Might be okay. Yeah, I just kind of crushed it. Didn't really love that. It's not what I prefer to do with a 9-iron. I prefer to just kind of ease them on in there. But unfortunately, 8-iron is 155 on a soft shot. 9-iron is normally I try to max it out like 142. Okay, which is a gapping issue for me. And I'm probably going to get that fixed in this off season. All right, so... 22 up 6, so we're looking at a 28-foot putt here. And if I hit it right, this is going to be good. Let me reset this. Let's do another look at it here. It is moving pretty good. I think that's going to be real good right there. So 28 feet. I'm thinking 7 miles an hour in my head. Probably, actually, I might think 7.5 just to make sure that I, I really get it there. Oh, six and a half. I did not hit it at all. That's why it's short. This is turning into an embarrassment that I'm teaching putting and putting like this. It's all right, though. It's kind of par for the course for me, unfortunately. I didn't really hit it better than this, so I don't have to worry about putts as much. All right. If I can get this, I'm um, actually only three under. If I can get this four under through nine... And maybe make a run on the back side, I'd feel pretty good about this round. So again, let's see if I actually have a draw or if I'm going to block another one. I'm feeling a draw here. Make sure I really turn through it. There we go. That's a little better. Yes, yeah, a little better. All right. This is kind of... More in my wheelhouse here. So we've got a wedge in the hand. That's definitely what I prefer. 67. We're up three. Up two. Sorry. And a false front. So I think I want to hit this. I think 65 is my number. If I hit it a little too strong, then worst case scenario, I guess I've still got a pot at it. But I'm thinking 65. See what I can do here. Yep, okay, finally left one below the hole. So let's see if I can actually make a decent putt here. All right, so nine-foot putt. Going to break a little bit. Probably, I like that right there. Let's see. Yep, I think that right there is going to be pretty good. And what's a nine foot putt over here between three and a half and four? Probably lean a little more towards that four. Let's see what I can do here. Oh man, this is just a terrible putting display by me. I'm sorry, I'm trying to teach you guys how to putt and can't even make anything. Maybe on the back side here it'll pick up for me. Three under at the turn. Let's see if I can hit some better shots. So leave better putts. All right, so this is 142. This is probably exactly how I want to hit a 9-iron. So I'm going to take a little bit off of this. The wind's going to kind of push a little bit. This should be a really good stock shot for me. Let's find out if that is the case. Should be pretty good. I think it should take a good hop forward, maybe. No? I think I'm just misjudging these iron shots really bad tonight. I don't like that. I normally hit these iron shots a lot better. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. So, 
I've missed the break a bunch. Just cannot seem to get it right. So this feels about good on 12s. I'm going to go one stick more. I feel like I've been kind of under reading stuff. Not right there. I like the one stick less. This is a 17 foot putt. So I'm trying to hit this. Let's say maybe just shy of five and a half. Is that right? Mm, probably closer to the five mile an hour mark. All right, I'm gonna go five and a half in my head just to just to make sure I get it there. Oh, I didn't hit it. But is it going to break in there? No. Terrible putt. Again, cannot hit anything to the hole. Well, this is turning into a real bad round real fast. I am not liking this at all. But this is unfortunately how I putt a lot of the time. So, All right, right there. Tree's not going to block anything. Hit it down there and maybe leave myself a straight putt for once somewhere. Hopefully. All right, 21, up six. What do we got? Coming off a ridge on the left, so actually that works out good for me since I tend to hit it just a hair left. So 127, I probably want to hit this just about 127, actually. So let's see if I can do it. Oh, I smoked it, but the wind's picked up a little bit, so maybe it might be okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's in that range that I don't really like tonight. Okay. Well, now this one is all about getting the HLA right. Make sure I start it right on the right line. So, let's keep it inside that, inside the cup right there. And hit a 13-foot putt. 13 feet is probably going to be about four and a half. Let's make a birdie. This would make me feel really good. There we go. There we go. About time. Okay. Maybe the back nine will pick up from here. Eagle here, and I'd feel really good about stuff. I'd feel good. So I'm actually at four, not five. Because I had to come back and restart the round. It's just a GS Pro thing, unfortunately. When you restart it, for some reason, it takes one shot off the last hole. So, I had to restart on the last par 5. Maybe this par 5 will hit a better drive and have a have a good chance at an eagle here. Let's see if I can get a good swing on this ball. I swung harder, but with more spin, so it's not going to go very far. All right. So I'm looking at 255 in. That's pretty much a three wood for me. I probably will try to maybe take a little bit off of it, if I'm honest, just because I don't want this going over the green. I'd rather hit this like a 245 shot and let it roll 10 yards. So let's see if I can do that. Just take a hair off this. Maybe hit it a little higher with a little more spin, possibly. Just like that. Give me a tap-in eagle. Okay. That's right in my wheelhouse of misses. Oh, and see it running away from the hole? This is not going to be a fun putt, I don't think, with how fast that's moving. This is going to come back quite a ways. Yeah, that really sucks, huh? That really sucks. Wow. 
that was really close to being a great shot. Okay, here's where all the fun starts. So, let's see how well I do at judging this. So I'm going to say, with this being up two foot three inches, so we're up 27 inches, I think that I think I said earlier that 18 inch mark is where I take 75%. I think I'm going to take 50% of this. So I'm actually only going to play this about 45 at max 50. So I'm thinking somewhere in the nine and a half to 10 mile an hour ball range, ball speed range. And with it being uphill, it's not going to move much. I'm going to basically just kind of put this since it's, Starting right, I'm going to put it right about there. Hope it doesn't move out. So I'm going to, I'm hoping nine and a half to ten. That's my, that's my goal. Nine and nine four, and that gets it almost there. And you know, if I would hit it ten, it'd probably been better. You, you might make an argument that 75 percent is better there. I don't know. It's kind of tough. Not an easy call. Well, this went from tap-in eagle to a nice little tap-in six-foot birdie here. Five foot, up one inch, six foot. That's okay. Still birdie. So that actually gets me to five under par here through 12 holes. Not what I'm looking for week in and week out, especially when the course I have a bunch of wedges in. However, it's not easy trying to talk through every shot. <laughs> All right. So again, I got a bunker down there. I don't really worry about fairway bunkers, if I'm being real honest. They're, I just add 10 yards, call it good. So this one, I'm just going to try and give it a good rip again. Oh, a little left, probably in the bunker. Probably in the bunker. Oh, wow. Couldn't have placed it any better, I don't think. All right, 113. Let's look at this. Let's look at this heat map here. So I've got a little bit of a backstop. Uh, with it being like that, I think I want to come in from under the hole. So I don't think I want to hit this 113. I think my number is probably 108 to 110. That's what I'm kind of feeling. So I'm going to see if I can hit this online, first of all. Tend to hit this wedge left for some reason. So I'm going to hit this online and 108. That's my number. Oh, and I blocked that one. Hit it 110. This is not going to be a good putt. Yeah, see, that's not what I'm looking for when I have a wedge in my hand. That's pretty terrible. I do not like that. Wedges in your hands are supposed to leave you in good spots to putt from, and this is not a good spot to putt from. Okay, so 18 up one, so 19 foot putt. The beads are moving pretty slow. However, with it being 12, it's going to move probably at least that much right there. I'm going to go one more. That's kind of what I like seeing. Again, you've seen me miss pretty much every putt that I've hit, but whatever. Um, this is going to be between five and five and a half, if I remember right. Let's see, we've got 18, 19 foot putt, five and a half. I'd probably actually want to hit it a little harder than five and a half, if I'm being real honest here. I don't think I want it to be... I think five and a half might be a little short, so I'm thinking 5.6 is the perfect number. Let's see what I can do here. 5.4, going to be in the jar short. You got to hit putts to the hole to make them. Can't be timid. You know, I think nights that I'm putting this bad, I um, I generally try to adjust. And so probably from the rest of the night on, I'm going to tell myself in my head something that's a whole half mile an hour more just because I need to make sure that I'm getting it there. Because if I'm not getting it there, not going to go in. All right. Again, so this hole, so let's talk a little bit about hole locations. You know, generally I like to just hit driver as far as I can up there, but when you see a hole location like this on the far right side of the green, you should be thinking, come in from the left. 
give yourself as much grain as possible to work with. So I'm going to pretty much aim at the pin and work it off the pin. So this is going to be a draw, hopefully, if I hit it right. And it'll leave me a shot from the left side of the fairway end. Rough is not bad. I actually kind of prefer rough on a lot of web shots just because it's not going to run out so much. Okay, so let's talk about this one here. Um, you've got a tight pin there. I am actually probably very, very happy that that ball did not stay in the fairway. Had that ball stayed in the fairway, I would be kind of chipping a little 54-degree wedge here. I am not going to be doing that. I'm going to be hitting a full sand, or a full lob wedge for me, which goes about 85 yards. Um, it might spin a little bit still, but with the rough, it's going to take some off. The reason I think I'm thinking 85 is because it's six degrees down. It's going to make it carry just a little bit less. So let's see what I can do here. There's 80, should be really good. Yep, there's that little less spin. Now, if you notice, I hit that with 12-3 backspin. So had that landed normally, it would have sucked back probably 15 feet at least. Okay, another one of these fun, fun, fun putts that I absolutely hate. This is all about judging your side hills around this course with your... Breaks. There's not many flat putts here, so let's see here. What do I feel like is a good line for this putt? That front, these beads are moving pretty good. I think that that right there, ah, I'm going to give it one more. One more right there. That's my line. I'm sticking with it. This is a nine-foot putt. I'm going to round up always. Nine-foot putt. It's going to be closer to four, so I'm thinking four miles an hour in my head. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm not seven under, I'm only six. Six under through 14, we're doing fair. I probably would like to be a little bit better off than this. It's a par 70. Um... Birdie the last four, maybe even get an eagle. Is there a par five left? There's not. That's okay. Birdie the last four here. Call it good. Make some good swings to end on. You know, this is not the round that I wanted it to be, but I have a feeling that the guys that putt really well, Willie, Balmer, those guys, they're going to be probably playing this course really, really well. All right, it's a good start to this hole. It's my fairway finer swing. Okay, so I got 182. This is this next hole is going to be the signature hole out here, but this one's a pretty cool one too. So there's a giant bowl over there on the right side. Start it right. 182 down six. So one, one, uh, 176 is what I'm thinking here is going to be to the hole. I think if I hit a 7-iron, I'm going to like it pretty well. And I'm actually, see, since this is 1.3 right, I think I'm actually going to leave it there. I think that this probably will start um, closer on the line to where that waving flag is there when, when my HLA is factored in. And hopefully I kind of draw it back to where it's going to stay under the, under the hole. I'm thinking 170 in my head. See if I can execute a good shot here. Yeah, it's kind of hanging on me. Should be pretty decent, though. That might be the best executed shot I've hit tonight, unfortunately. Leave myself in a pretty good spot considering everything. I would have liked if I would have hit it a little bit more left, but 
as you can see, I tend to get these a lot. I got a zero side spin reading there. Um, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I tend to think it's not because how often do you see zero side spin? But it is what it is. I think it's an error by foresight, and I kind of get hosed sometimes with my left to right or my right to left shots being left out too far right. But you know, kind of is what it is. It's like golf, kind of get what you get sometimes. Um, okay. Let's see here. I think that I can hit a good putt here, 22 feet. I'm thinking six, maybe a little more. I, oh, I like that line. I like the line. Keep the line, 6.2. Six point four, bingo! There we go. All right, three holes left. Let's see what I can do. One twenty-five down five. So, let's see. Is this where is this at in the thumbprint? Okay, so this this green is notorious. It's got a thumbprint, and you can see where the bowl is on the green. So this is actually just on the left side of that ridge. I really wish I knew whether it was on which side of the thumbprint it was on, but Kind of is what it is. I'm going to chip a, this is a, let's call it a 115 shot with a wedge. Just trying to let it be able to run out a little bit more. One seventeen, hit it wind. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll take that every day. Again, a little bit of a weird, get the weird blockies, but it's okay. All right. There we go. Nine footer. Knock this in and keep moving. The so nine footer, I think I said earlier, that's about four. So I'm thinking about four in my head right now. 4.3, you know, honestly... I don't think I've said it yet, but the cup capture speed is about six feet more than what it should be. So if you hit it hard, that's why the putts go in. All right, so now I'm at eight under, again, because of that one hole that didn't record right. See, this is 31 yards downhill, so I know that I can just absolutely rip this. I got a double wide fairway down there where the two holes are split in the fairway. I am going to try and hit this as hard as I possibly can, so don't make fun of me. When I top out at like one, 113 swing speed, I'm just trying to get this ball as far down there as I possibly can. Oh, skip over the bunker for me. Had I known that I would reach that bunker, I probably would have moved. But that's okay. So I got 104 here. Um, don't want to spin this very much. Down one. So this is going to be a 50 degree. This is that. This is that club that I don't really care for all that much. And I'm going to just try and hit like a hundred yard shot. I don't really want to fly it all the way there. Wind's going to push it just a touch. So this is my please go straight 100 yard shot with this club. Oh, and there it is, the giant pole. That is something I really need to work on. I don't know if I need to get the lie angle change on this, but something when I set up to it does not look good. And it cost me dearly. I've had that club in my hand a lot tonight, and I've hit some absolutely terrible shots with it. All right, it's going to move more. 25 down, 26 down fours. So let's call it 22. All right, so what am I looking at here? I think putt's going to fall off at the end. Down four. I think this has got to be the line. It's 22. I'm thinking that just over six again. I think it's got to be at least six. I, I would even be okay with six and a half, honestly. Just making sure I'm hitting it there. 6.1. And a bad read. Well, 
no good, no good. Let's see if I can birdie the last and at least get in the house at birdie and half the holes, I guess. So right here. All right. This is a tough pin. I remember this pin. This was actually used in the dam when my buddies played in it, and he sent me a picture of it right over that bunker, how ridiculous it was. So this is not going to be an easy hole. That's kind of an odd shot there. 255 is a weird carry for how good I hit that. But that's okay. And now we are completely blocked out. Okay, so now I'm going to fight for par here. See if I can just get in the house at 8 under. And call it good. Okay, so let's. first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the tree. So I have colliders pretty much all over this dang thing. Up 12, so I've got to hit something. I'm probably looking out over here, actually. I'm going to hit something high out over there. Yeah, this is going to be a take your par and get out of here hole. I'm probably looking to hit something, you know, this being 163. I think I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to try and see if I can't get something good going up there. Um, this is kind of an iffy shot. This is not what I normally hit. But... I think the collider's cut out like right about there, so let's let's just hedge over here just a little bit. And then this, I've got a seven iron that I'm gonna really open up and I'm just gonna try and swing hard. This is 163 effectively. You know what, I'm gonna take a six iron and see if I can't just get even more on it. I'm gonna really hedge it over there now, make sure that I can just really, really swing this ball in there because that's all I wanna do is make sure that this ball is gonna cut. Got the face wide open here, ball way at the front of my stance. There it is. It's kind of banana. 153. You know, all in all, with what I left myself after that very strange 255 carry drive, I think I'm okay with that. I don't know. I really ever hit a ball that only carries 255, but. All right, so this one, lag putts, when I get to them, my whole goal is to what's going to fall between the hole and the edge of the gimme circle. So I'm reading a putt that's going to finish right here, and if I hit it one way or the other, it's going to be good. I'm just trying to worry about speed at that point. You know, you can't make everything. So I'm thinking something right about there is probably going to be pretty good. This is 46 feet. So this is going to be about a nine and a half to ten mile an hour putt, and I'm just trying to get out of here with par, save a bogey free round. Nine seven, it's a good putt. The line, not bad, might die in there. Pretty good. I'll take that every day. If you have questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Discord. I'm always happy to talk putting or whatever. I'm not an expert as you definitely saw throughout the round, but happy to help anytime. Um, username on there is the same as it is on here, C. Stevenson. So find me. Hope this helps.